Hello, this is Bishop Israel Ade Ajala. I want to welcome you to the month of February, our month of victory celebration. Our month of victory celebration. This month, our scripture is taken from 1 John 5, 4. And I'm reading from Message Translation. It says, every God-begotten person conquers the world's ways. The conquering power that brings the world to its knees is our faith. Our faith is what brings the world to its knee. Uh, this month, I will be sharing with you about the importance of faith. You see, everybody has faith. It is the object of our faith that we need to look at critically. And that's why I want to share more with you this month on importance of faith, what faith can do to you, and how you should walk by faith and not by sight. Let's go into the sanctuary now to join the service that is already going on. But before we go, I want you to like, subscribe, and share this channel. The Lord bless you. See you in the sanctuary. And when you finish doing that, you may be seated in the presence of God. So glad to be here tonight from all the way to Trinidad. I never used to say that, you know. I, I never used to say from all the way to Trinidad. But today, when I was coming from New York, I realized that I almost crossed the whole of America. It was from the east. New York is in the east. Here's in the west. And I'm looking at the map while I'm coming in the, in the plane. And I realized it reached almost three-quarters across America. We almost, we almost get to... Uh, 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 California. Is that something? So I'm sitting there and I'm flying and I'm saying, whoa, this is long. God has to have something in store for me tonight. Amen. And I just came to rejoice with you. I want you to be happy. I want you to rejoice. This is going to be a good weekend. Uh, we're going right in until Sunday. We're going to have a wonderful time. I want you to take everything that you can. Amen. If you think I'm talking too fast, I want you to tell me, slow down, slow down, Bishop, slow down. Okay, because I have so much to tell you. I'm so happy to be with my brother. He's a good man. He's a good man. Uh, the accent for him, I want you to know that. I told him that just now. After coming to Trinidad the last time he did, uh, I didn't know. I, I mean, I'm accustomed with him. I didn't know he was, you know, impressed the people so much. But after he left, they were asking for him. They said, when he's coming back? And I came to New York, and New York, they're planning the anniversary, I think it's in, in April, May, in May. And I said, who you all want? Who you all want to bring? They said, we need that guy, that, that same guy. I said, who guy? They said, the guy that make, made, made us laugh in Trinidad. He made us laugh. <laughs> Such a humble person. And, and I'm so blessed today when I came home. Uh, you see? You see? You hear what I just said? I said, when I came home. So when I came home today... <laughs> The, 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 the brothers were was so uh, kind to me. Came up, picked me up in the airport. Put me in a nice room. Food everywhere. Bananas and everything. And I said, yeah. I can live here for the next three days. <laughs> Amen. I'm so happy to be here. Amen. God bless you. We love you so much. Amen. So if I can't meet you personal, can you just do one more thing for me before I preach? Lean over the person next to you. Say, I love you. Just say, I love you. We want to feel the love here tonight because there's so much wonderful things that's going to happen here. Amen. Amen. I want to talk to you quickly, quickly and briefly, and as the Lord lead me, on a subject that is called breaking the silence. It's, it's a subject that God has given me, and I believe this is a timely word. It is important to be timely when you preach the word of God. I've been telling the people in Trinidad, everybody wants to open churches. But opening a church is not just like, it's not like opening a business. Opening a church is spiritual. It's different. When we, when we started Jesus C. Lamb, I had to go in the bushes. I don't know what Bishop did, but I had to go and fast for 21 days like a crazy man and ask God for his will. It's not just getting a place to rent and opening a church. It's, 
there's things you have to do with the guidance and leadings of God. I, I looked to the, the flyer and, and Bishop put on the flyer. He said, what divine, divine visitation is that? And it, it must be divine. If you attempt to do anything, if you're tempting to do it, to do anything, if you are tempting to do anything that does not require the divine intervention of the Holy Spirit, then what you do is not of God. Do not attempt any dream. If your dream does not desire help from God, then it's not a God-given dream. The, the message breaking the silence is a spiritual message. It's a message dealing with your spiritual affairs, with your spiritual level, breaking the silence. Because if the enemy, or if the enemy, not just if the enemy, but every, every spiritual attack in your life, every spiritual attack is to shut you down. Every spiritual attack that you will experience in lifetime is to shut you up. If the devil can shut you up, he shuts you down. Let's see it again. If the devil can shut you up, he shut you down. Because the power is in your declaration. Everybody's saying declare and decree. But David found out the answer in chapter 2, in verse 7. He said, I will declare the decree because it is already decreed. What we'll have to do is to find what is decreed on your life. Decreed means signed, sealed, delivered. When you find out what is signed, sealed, and delivered, it's because that will be the spoken word or the written word. The written word cannot be delivered word without it being the spoken word. So what we have to do is to find the decree and declare the decree. And when you declare the decree, you're saying what God say. And when you say what God say, the devil tremble. When you say what you say, it don't do demons nothing. When you speak what you think, it don't move in the atmosphere. But when you say, when you speak the written word, the written word become the living word. And when the word, written, written word become the living word, because you speak it, demons have to tremble. So there's things in your life that you can do naturally, but there are other things that you have to do spiritually. Some things in your life call for spiritual affairs, for deep, call it for the deep, call it to the deep. Jesus said to the disciples, these kind will not come out. But by prayer and fasting. I want to talk to you about the seasons of life quickly. About the season of life in breaking the silence. Note please. Uh, there, there's a pastor of mine, Bishop. There's a, a pastor friend, one of our pastors that passed in New York City. He came on to Trinidad the first time and he fell in love with Trinidad. He said, I love the spirit. He loved everything about Trinidad. How many of you ever been to Trinidad? Let me see your hand. <laughs> Turn it out, Colorado. <laughs> She's been there. <laughs> he, he loved everything about Trinidad. Trinidad, you can go into Trinidad and you can see somebody mango a tree and take some stones up and, and pelt the mango and get the mango. I know, I think that, that's how it is in Nigeria, right? There's nice things like what we call doublers, roti. You hear about roti? Rota. And this little nice thing that the young man fell in love with Trinidad so much. And I notice it because every year he will come to the convention. And one day I decided to ask him. I said, I said, let me ask you something, Pastor Martin. Let me ask you something. He said, what it is? I said, tell me, would you one day think you could live in Trinidad? I mean, forget about America and just live in Trinidad. Because I noticed that you love Trinidad so much. And he looked at me and, and with, with, like, like almost with regrets. He looks at me, shake his head, and he said, nah. <laughs> I said, why no? He said, because Bishop, I need my four seasons. Yes, I love summer. 
But every now and then, I need to see the snow fall. I want to see the fall, the autumn. I want to see spring. And then I notice in the spirit, we also need the four seasons. Number one, number one, the growing season. The growing season is when you begin to change. Put it up real quick. Uh, Luke chapter 2 and verse 52 in the NIV. The growing season. Luke chapter 52 and verse 2. It is speaking about Jesus. It said Jesus grew. And he grew in wisdom. He grew in stature, he got taller, and in favor with God and man. The growing, the growing, everybody won't understand the growing season when it starts happening to you. Because when you start, when you start experiencing a growing season, people are going to misunderstand you. They're going to think that you're changing. Because they're going to see you, they're going to see you handling things better than you used to before. When you start experiencing a growing season, you wouldn't deal with things the way you used to do. You wouldn't allow things to keep you awake at night. People wonder what happened to you because they're going to be doing things to see how you're going to react. Don't you know that there are people that the enemy will send just to see how you will react? And the way you react to a thing tells if you are growing or not. The growing season is a serious season. It's a season when you are moving from one place to the next. Because the truth of the matter is, you can't stay one place all the time. As a father, as a son, as a family member, as a businessman, as a pastor, as a preacher. You can't stay one place all the time. There must be a sign of growth. If your this year, if your 2024 is the same as your 2023, then something is wrong. Growing is a sign of life. It's a sign that you have something in you, that you're pushing, that you're going forward. The word is progress. The definition of that word is onward, forward, onward, forward, forever, forward, forever, onward. You don't stay at the sea, at the Red Sea and complain. What you do, you speak a word and you command the sea to open because you have to move on. Let's see it again. You have to move on. I don't care what you've been through. You have to move on. I don't care what they did to you. You have to move on. I don't care how much they hurt you. You have to move on. And that is your growing season. Your growing season is your is your is your stretching season. That is when God is going to ask you to use your faith. And you will have to do things that you will not do in the natural, but it will work out for you. Somebody say hallelujah. It will work out for you. It's your changing season and it's your stretching season. The number two season is your pruning season. I'll talk to you about that. Your pruning season will be necessary at this time. In Trinidad, my house, in front of my house, is not very good looking. Let me tell you, if anybody come to my house, if you come to my house, you will see a, a great big wall. It's not as beautiful as other people's house. And I did that, I did not, I did that on purpose. Because in a country like us, we, 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 we want to keep covered. So if you come to my house, you will see a big great wall in the front of the house, a big black gate, and you don't know what's going on behind there. It's not very beautiful. You have to come in. I have to invite you in my house. I have to take you in the back of my house where I, I designed I design the house for pastors that need to let go of their stress. I have my garden. I have my swimming pool. I have my fishes. I have my waterfall. But nobody knows that on the outside. You can never tell what's going on on the inside. 
I say that to say this. So I said to myself, I said, I have to fix this. I have to make this place look a little bit, of, you know, do something in the front just a little bit. Because in the back it's so beautiful. So I decided to plant some hedges. You know where I'm coming from. You know the hedges that you prune? I planted the hedges and then, and then somehow the gardener put too much fertilizer in some parts of the hedges and dried up some of them. And after it was dried up, I had to take up the dry stuff and I had to plant back some new ones. But the thing is, while the new ones is growing, the older ones was already big. And I had to be careful. Because I was leaving to come to America and I had to tell the guys that this thing needs pruning. It is big enough to prune, but you have to be careful what you're pruning. Because if you're not careful what you're pruning, you can be pruning the ones that still need to grow. I found the scripture for you. In John chapter 15 and verse 2. In John chapter 15 verse 2, Jesus said, he said, my father is the pruner. That's what he said. He said, my father is the one that prunes. He said, he said, he said, if you don't bring forth fruit, if you don't bring forth fruit, he said, he'll cut you off. But if you bring, if you want to bring forth more fruit, he will still cut you. I'll say that again. If you don't bring fruit, He will cut you off. But if you want to bring more fruit, He will cut you off. There's times in your life when you feel cut and you don't know why. Whenever you cut, God's trying to increase you. There's a, there's a message going on. We have to be careful with the preaching these days. We have to be careful uh, to, uh, to tell the difference between the, the preaching and the motivation. So there's a lot of motivational speakers that are trying to be preachers. Talk to me, somebody. And there's a lot of preachers trying to be motivational speakers. So we keep, it's all mixed up. So there's a motivational speaker or, or, or motivational preachers that, that, is, that is trying, encouraging people to cut people off your life. And we hear time and time again, I preach it myself. You can't carry them. Cut them loose. Don't let them pull you back. Cut them loose. You need to cut people out of your life because they're not good for you. They will take you down to their level and be preaching. But ladies and gentlemen, don't you know that there's some people in your life that you ought not to cut loose? Don't you know if you cut loose some people out of your life, you could be cutting the blessings out of your life because there's some people God put there in order to bless you. And if God didn't put them there, you wasn't even going to be where you are today. Am I preaching too loud? Be good. I see people cut people out of their lives and they cut the blessing out too. The pruning season is a very delicate season. It's a season where you have to be careful who you're, who you're pushing away from your life. Because your people that you might be pushing away don't need to be pushed. The pruning season is where we examine ourselves. The pruning season is a time where we take a serious look at our attitudes. And to understand what we need to cut out out of our lives. The pruning season. And then we have, quickly, then we have the wilderness season. You've heard about that season. The wilderness season is a crucial season. The wilderness season is a season of loneliness. You can read Deuteronomy chapter 8, the whole, the whole chapter. The, 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 the wilderness season is a teaching season. It's where God will put you through some stuff just to teach you something. Talk to me. Anybody ever experienced that? gone through something and you want to know why you didn't get anything from it he said I will try to teach you something and if you don't learn by now you'll keep on walking along in that wilderness until you catch it am I talking to anybody or is that just, just me 
Have you ever just keep on walking in your life and you're trying to figure out when you're going to get that job, when you're going to get that breakthrough, when you're going to get that business, and you find yourself just going along in circles, and you ask yourself, God, what, what are you trying to teach me? Why are you trying to tell me? What do I have to go through this for? I'm trying to figure it out. It's the wilderness season. Let me tell you a little bit more about the wilderness season. The wilderness season is when God's voice seems to be silent. The wilderness season is the most silent season in all of your season. The wilderness season, you want to hear from God and you cannot hear from God. Now, at first I said, if anybody here, I don't know if anybody here, uh, 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 someone like, uh, if there's anybody here, I don't know if there's anybody here relating with what I'm saying. This, this season, there's one more season I want to tell you about, and then I shut up. The last season is the harvest season. Let me tell you about the harvest season. The harvest season is the last season. The harvest season is a time where we often reap the benefits of the seeds that was planted. Listen to me carefully. Listen to me carefully. The harvest season is the time when we often reap the benefits of the seeds that we, that we planted during the other season. So the half a season is created. I'm almost there. The half a season is created. You create the half a season through the growing season, through the pruning season, through the wilderness season, then come the harvest season. Listen, if you don't go through the growing season and the pruning season and the wilderness season, you'll never bounce up the harvest season. Because while you're going through the growing season, you are creating the harvest season. When you're going through the pruning season, you are creating the harvest season. When you're going through the wilderness season, you are creating the harvest season. You'll never get a harvest season if you don't create it. Harvest don't come just like that. So whatever season, whatever season, God is putting you through. You have to bear in mind. I have to keep on planting. I have to keep on planting. I might not be in a good way, but I have to keep on planting. Let me let me share this with you. Let me share this with you. I was looking at Facebook the other day. I was looking at Facebook, and and I saw something on Facebook that made me cry. I cried. Somebody was helping somebody financially. And it was not the first time I cry because of this. I cried many times before. But this one was different. Now what I did while, while I was looking at these stuff, I was seeing people helping people that need to be the help. And I myself wanted to help too. But when I saw the condition, this is what I told God with tears in my eyes. I said, God, if you bless me, I will be a blessing to people. I said, Lord, I said, Lord, you help me. I've been saying this for years. Lord, you help me. And I will help people. When I opened my first church, I admire you, what you did on every Thursday. How you give food to the hungry. When I started the ministry, the first thing was on my mind was to reach out to the less fortunate, to people that don't have. And not, not, not like some folks say, God help those that can help themselves. But there are people that cannot help themselves. And God will use you to bring them out out of the hole that they are buried in are you hearing me so every time I see it I say God help me and if you help me I'll help them if you help me I'll help them but I've been saying this for years and he said I say if you help me I'll help them but last two weeks I, I saw this on Facebook and I go to say the same thing I go to say Lord if you if you help me I'll help them and the Holy Ghost spoke to me he said what about if I don't help you what about if you help them with what I already help you with I said 
I said, I said, I said, I thought I didn't have. Sometimes you feel like you don't have, but you have enough to help somebody. And if you can't use what you have, you're not making room for your harvest. You have to be able to plant seed in every season of your life. No matter what season it is. You see it? And, and watch this, watch this, watch this, watch this. I begin to cry. I begin to weep. And I never knew that I had enough to give without God adding to what I had. Jesus tests Philip. He tests Philip. You hear what I'm saying? The Bible says he tested Philip. He said, where are we going to get bread? I'm almost there. He, he asked Philip the same question he asked Andrew in another chapter. He said, where are we going to buy bread? The Bible says he tested Philip because he knew what he was going to do. And, and Philip said, what are these among so many? There are some things when you walk in my faith, you must never say. When you walk in that faith life, there are some things you must never let come out of your mouth. One of the things you must never let come out of your mouth is that I don't have enough and I'm not enough. I don't have enough and I'm not enough. I, I want to help, but I can't help. I want to help. The Bible says Jesus knew what he would have done because he is a provider. And if God is a, is a provider, he will provi provide for you just so you can provide for some somebody else you have to keep on sowing in the worst of your time never say you don't have enough because the message is the message is the message is that if I can take two two fishes and five loaves of bread and feed five thousand people I can do anything I can take a litter and I can make much we didn't know all about that until COVID came when COVID came we start doing plenty with litter And I know a lot of people died. I know a lot of people suffer. I know a lot of people lose loved ones. But we have to stand up in these days and say, thank God for COVID. Thank God for the recession. It teaches us how to take a letter and do much. So the harvest season is created. I'm done. I'm almost there. Five more minutes. The harvest season is created by the seeds that you planted in the other seasons ah. never stop planting every opportunity God give you to sow a seed is an opportunity to increase your income when money leaves your hands it does not leave your life it goes into your future and create your harvest never stop sowing seeds always look for opportunities to sow seeds never stop planting it might be love it might be giving it might be prayer it might be support never stop planting in the worst seasons of your life somebody say hallelujah I know why I'm still here. I'm still here because of the seeds that I saw while I was over there. Let me let me show you let me show you real quick in the next five minutes about the silence of God, how it works, and what you need to understand. Number one, the music is not in the notes; it is in the silence between. What, what does that mean? 
the, the, listen carefully, my brothers and sisters. The first thing you need to know about, the, uh, the, about the, the silence, the season of God's silence, is that number one, the music is not in the notes. It is, in the, it is between. The music is not in the notes. It is in the silence between the notes. The music is not in the notes. It is in the silence uh, between the notes. What it means? It means that when God is not talking, He's working. Somebody need to hear that. You miss it. You miss it. When God is not talking, He is working. God was silent for 400 years between Malachi and Matthew 400 years he was silent didn't talk anything and when he broke his silence he broke it to a doubter Zachariah after 400 years he said now I'm going to talk to somebody He's looking to announce the birth of John the Baptist. And the first person that he broke his silence to is Zachariah. And Zachariah doubted. Let me tell you something. If you have to break your silence, if you have to tell somebody your dream, if you have to tell somebody where you want to go in life, if you have to tell somebody your desires, do not tell a doubter. Do not break your silence to a doubter. Choose the people that you want to talk to. Choose the people that you want to feedback from. There are people that are there just to kill your dreams. And the angel had to shut up John the Baptist for nine months. I had a lot of dreams. But I told the wrong people. Yeah. Told the wrong people. That was happy for me. Zachariah doubted that, that he, was, he was young enough. And, and he said, he said, do you know who you're talking to? He said, it's me, Zaki. He said, I'm old. I can't do that no more. Me and Liz, Elizabeth, we, we retired a long time ago. We don't do them stuff. He said, he said, and did you take a good look at Elizabeth lately? Check, check out Elizabeth. She's in the kitchen cooking. Go check them. Check out. She's old and not just old. She's parent. Here's the word. Here's the word for somebody tonight. Here's the word. Is there anything too hard for God to do? Here, here's the word. Here's the word. Here's the word. With God, nothing is impossible. I don't preach. I want to I wanna minister to somebody right now. Here's the word. With God, all things are possible. I don't care how far you've been. I don't care how much you tried. I don't care who blew your mind and who told you that you will never make it and that you will never have it and that you will never accomplish it. You will never work that kind of work. You will never get hired in that kind of office. I don't care who you told your dreams and they pull you down and they put doubts in your head and they tell you that you're not good enough. You don't have the right color. You don't have the right texture of hair. You don't have the right educational background. I came to tell you the devil is a liar. My question is, is, is there anything to have for God to do? The next question is, the answer is that there's nothing impossible with God. If you put your hands to it, you will get your victory. If you make a step forward, God will make a step forward. Nothing shall be impossible. Everybody lift your hands and say, say nothing shall be impossible. Nothing. Nothing. Somebody's going to get their victory this weekend. Nothing shall be impossible. Nothing. You keep on standing. Let me tell you something. The, the scripture setting. The scripture setting. While Jesus was silent for 32 years. The Bible says he worked the thing. 
Do not waste your silence. Do not waste your moment of silence. For 32 years, he worked the thing. For 32 years, he used his silence to increase in wisdom. Somebody say hallelujah. He worked his silence to grow in stature. He worked the moment of silence. Don't let your moment of silence bring depression upon you. If you're in a quiet place, work the thing. If nobody called you on the phone, you work the thing. You know what I like? You know what I like about Joseph? You remain standing. You'll get this one right here. You know what I like about Joseph? Is that when they left Joseph in the prison, he was silent for two years. You hear me? The but the promise that he was coming back, that he was going to talk in his behalf, and the but to forget Joseph for two years. And when Joseph wasn't hearing anything from the butler, it didn't stop Joseph from talking to God. Let me tell you something if God is not talking to you, talk to God. Keep on praying. Come on, lift your hands. Lift your hands. Keep on praying. Keep on calling. Don't be silent. Don't be silent. Don't be silent. Break it tonight. Sometimes it's easy to, to go in depression. It's easy to say, nobody cares for me. Nobody loves me. They don't call me on the phone and then so be it. Don't have nobody to talk to. Talk to God. The Bible said Joseph never stopped talking to God. You might not be where you want to be. You might not hear what you want to hear from the person that you want to hear it from. But do not be so deaf as not to hear it from the person that says it's from their hearts. Because there's a reason for your silence. God is building character. He's bringing you closer. Yes. Y'all know the song, breathe upon me, breath of God. Come breathe upon me. It's a simple song. I don't know if you can learn it tonight. Come breathe upon me, breath of God. Breathe upon me, spirit of the Lord. As I lift my hands in surrender to your name most high you to his spirit walking in your love Jesus I adore Jesus I adore Jesus I adore Your holy name Come breathe upon me Bread of God Breathe upon me As I lift my hands in surrender to your name.
the song say, come breathe on me. Christian Center. Thank you for joining us. We welcome you to watch this message and others again by Bishop Israel Ade Ajala, live streamed on YouTube and Facebook. Be blessed.